what happens when your grand adventure turns into a nightmare. The little voice shouted at me, turn to your right now! I saw blood all over. And there is no more fear when you are really in pain. Three Singaporean families relive their troubles abroad. I called him, there was no response. What happens when an exciting trip goes horribly wrong? Never in my thought that would be the last goodbye. In this episode... He's very happy when he's flying. An ex-commando's passion brings him to one of the most beautiful places on Earth. Beer is considered a mecca of paragliding. This October, though, was a little bit different. There was some black cloud formation behind the mountain. I'm worried about it because there is no contact with him on the radio. Casey started flying in 2016. But you could see that he was picking up very, very fast. He graduated very quickly into flying solo. As an ex-commando, one of the things that he loved most is free fall. Paragliding is high adrenaline, but it's also very meditative. It's like flying with the birds. Imagine you're in an aircraft seat, but no neighbors, no aircraft. You're just by yourself, it's quiet. Casey told me about his attraction towards paragliding. I want to be a fly, I want to be just get airborne, and I have to experience how birds feel. As a father, he's very committed. All the fun things that he thinks that children should be doing, he'll make sure that he did it with them and make sure that our kids enjoy their childhood days. So when our son got married, so he said that, OK, it's time that he can start to relax and um, do something that he likes. Initially, when he decided to pick up the sport, I was thinking, yeah, it's quite dangerous. We always do things together. So I said, OK, since you're in here, um, I will also pick it up. Then he laughed. <laughs> he says that wait until he got his tandem license, then he can, we can paraglide together. Because he goes paragliding so often, I'm not so worried. Smile. And he does his homework. He will actually look at the geographical outlay of the place before he actually starts flying and all that. Whenever he completed his paragliding, he would tell me that he's done so that I don't have to worry about him. Nice! Competitions in paragliding keep happening around the world. Every competition menu is a different weather pattern, different topography. So that thing makes you know, a huge difference. It increases your flying experience, your skill. So October is flying season in B. So many pilots come just to fly. They also hold a competition called the Billing Paragliding Open. And Casey had signed up for that. Perfect. Yeah. I met Casey after 10 days of my arrival in Beer. We met in Zostel, where we shared a dormitory. I met him first time. He looked like a tough guy. But when you start communication with him, you can find him is a very nice guy, very down to earth. He is not carrying any ego with him. He speaks with everyone. Everyone knows Casey in Beer. His first time in Beer, so he asked me, I'm flying here alone. I don't know anything about this topography. Can we fly together? Like this, we have become a flying buddy. Casey and me fly together, so around four or five days. Before you take off, all your equipment must be in top condition. 
your fabric, your lines, your harness and your reserve. Normally we do a five point check to check that we've got our leg straps on, chest strap on, helmet on. Ready check. Ready check all in clear. And uh, to see that there are no other paragliders flying in the way in front of me and that we're ready to take off. I inform him I am skipping today's flying. I am preparing some documentation for my paragliding competition. Somewhere around 3 o'clock to 4, I text him some messages. I have not received any message from him that day. I thought maybe the battery may get drained off. As soon as it's getting dark, I'm a little bit worried about it because once he landed, he just used to message me to inform his safety. I really don't know about his location, where he is or what exactly happened to him. My husband, Kok Chun, he's full of life. He's very energetic. <laughs> Ever since he obtained his license, he'll go quite often, pretty often, in fact, to many countries. Now and then he will send photographs uh, to show me the place. No, no. <laughs> He always sent me pictures of him with children because we love to see kids. <laughs> Every time when he goes paragliding, half of his luggage will be filled with chocolates and sweets for the children. <laughs> Casey was scheduled to go for the Palu competition. Be happy! I arrived in Palu on the 24th of uh, September for the paragliding competition. I met Casey in the morning in the headquarters. We immediately started talking and we realized we were both in the army before and so we had a lot to talk about and we had a really, really good connection. As part of the paragliding community in general, you meet a lot of good people and Casey was kind of this pilot or was looking more for other people, putting the safety in the priorities to be sure that we were having fun and no accident during flying. On the third day of the competition, we took off quite early. So at 12, it was finished, and then we decided to go for a coffee. And it was about two in the afternoon when uh, I first felt shaking a little bit like, oh, this is an earthquake. At three o'clock, he texts and say that he felt some tremor. I even text a picture to show me that everybody is still sitting down having coffee. The 7.5 magnitude earthquake hit central Sulawesi Island in Indonesia. The moment we were down in the lobby, the ground started shaking. Gempa itu goyang kiri kanan kiri kanan. I was at the moment unable to stand up. Casey was next to me and trying to stand up. One second later, Casey next to me was like one meter above me, and I was lower. And then the second after, that was the other way around. Saya lagi di bawah di lantai sama Sarah tiba-tiba di depan semua jatuhan televisi kena muka saya. We turned around and we saw the whole hotel collapsing. My daughter Googled and told me that Mercure Hotel, where he's staying, has collapsed. It was a um, terrifying and moment for both of us at the point.
we could hear people crying, people yelling everywhere, crying for help. All the dust were just, was just falling down. I saw this little girl trapped in the metallic frame. We reached this little girl and she was bleeding from her face, bleeding from her arms. And that's the moment we spotted what appeared to be the mother. Saya berada di reruntuhan beton yang sangat besar. Kaki saya masuk besi. I needed to put this girl safe first. So I grabbed this girl. I kind of climbed down the, the debris in case she stayed there to help the mother. Dia berusaha menolong saya, tapi dia tidak bisa seorang diri. From the moment I turn around, I see at the horizon a big dark line and there was a tsunami coming. And then I yelled to Casey, there is a tsunami that's coming. You need, to, you need to get high, you need to take protection, take shelter. I put the little girl in the tree. I climbed myself in the tree. And then suddenly the wave was there, smashing all the bulls. The strength of the wave was enormous. The wave is crashing in the hotel. And I was just thinking, where is Casey? Where is he? This thing is not going to make it. There is no escape. Reports say that the waters have receded. The damage several homes, killing one person and injuring at least 10 others. If I stay in the tree, I might die. I climb down, I put the little girl on my shoulders. I walk for like two hours with her. And I arrive in a survivor's camp, and suddenly I see sitting on a chair, I see KC. I put the girl down, I run to him, I'm like, man, you made it. And we just hug, and that moment, I'm like, that's amazing. I, I, I had no words because I really thought he died. And the most beautiful thing ever, he kneeled down and he told the little girl, your mother is alive. Dia berteriak, hep, hep, sampai datanglah seseorang. Itu pun ada dua jam lebih baru orang itu bisa datang membantu saya dengan teriakan dia. Tidak sama sekali dan tidak ada sama sekali hubungan darah. Dia rela mengkorbankan dirinya untuk orang lain. Dia memberikan saya bilang anak kamu masih hidup. Itu membuat saya semangat. Seven of our paragliding friends died in the collapsed hotel. Uh, so we got really lucky to be able to be evacuated in a military plane. I picking up at the airport. When I gave him a hug, he was asking me, darling, is it me or is the earth still shaking? Although he's shaken, right from that incident, it didn't stop him because he still goes to beer for his paragliding at Shadiuk. Yeah, that was just two weeks after the Palu earthquake. my oh, oyster! Beer is one of his dream destinations because it's a beautiful place. It could be considered a mecca of paragliding. This October, though, was a little bit different. We had noticed that there was overdevelopment of clouds. If you're not so experienced, it's more bumpy flying. Where there are strong updrafts, there are going to be strong downdrafts. And those downdrafts can cause your glider to collapse. It can cause you to lose control of your glider if you're not careful. Casey and me, when we reached to take off, there was a, some black cloud formation behind the mountain. It's not uh, look like a worried, but yes, it's a Himalayan weather, so we cannot predict. We plan, okay, we can go to this direction. We just 
reach uh, he, this point and we can uh, make a safe landing me and kc we uh, took up together i planned my short flight and i just try to move away from that black cloud developed and i just secure myself near to the landing area i landed around 1 130 at the main landing area and as soon as i landed i just gave a radio check to kc he is not connected so i really don't know whether he is coming back to the landing area or is something goes wrong there was a over development there was some black cloud formation and that was a prediction of thunderstorm so i really don't know whether he is coming back to the landing area or is if something goes wrong i was worried i was keep messaging him but i was not getting any reply but finally we land i received his message on my whatsapp i have landed safely luckily nothing happened to me but i hit at the down draft i met him around 5 5:15 pm at the hostel and when he saw me he just hugged me he just like look like a scared when he share everything he feel comfortable and he was preparing for a next day flight i am preparing some documentation for my paragliding competition and i inform him i am going to skip that day flying i said him have a safe flight enjoy and see you at the landing on monday morning i do sense that it's a bit unusual because he didn't text to greet me good morning five 536 i'm little bit worried about it because there is no contact with him on radio i was waiting for him to call me finally his friend called to say that he's not back from his paragliding so they do a search for him the next morning टेन ओ क्लॉक से हमने सर्च अभियान स्टार्ट किया और तकरीबन वन एंड हाफ आवर तक सर्च करने के बाद एरी को सर्च करने के बाद जो लोअर अल्टीट्यूड है उसको सर्च करने के बाद जो हुआ कि हाई अल्टीट्यूड में जैसे हमने ग्रोथ कि जो पायलट ग्लाइडर की तरह लगती है जो माउंटेन में कहीं फंसी हुई है टेबल कर सकते हैं हुवर कर सकते थे वहाँ पर हेलीकॉप्टर स्टे किया और हमारी टीम नीचे उतरी और जहाँ पे वो विक्टम हमें दिखाई दे रहा था जो पायलट फंसा हुआ दिखाई दे रहा था या गिरा हुआ दिखाई दे रहा था वहाँ पे पहुँचने के बाद पहुँचने के बाद ही हमें उसकी स्थिति के बारे में पता चला दैट्स वेन माई सन रिसीव अ कॉल दैट ही डोट मेक इट द फॉलोइंग डे द डॉक्टर कंडक्टेड द पोस्टमार्टम and uh, basically told us the degree of the head injury was such that death must have been instantaneous it's very difficult and tough time because you are sharing a uh, room with your friend and uh, unfortunately he is no more i know this guy was strong this why this guy was brave and he put his life in danger to help someone else this news just just broke my heart completely every pilot carries a flight instrument so from that we 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 are able to assess that kc was flying normally till about 2 seconds before impact so what might have happened was that he was quite close to a mountain and because of turbulence the wing would have collapsed kc has love flying always you could see the happiness in his eyes when he was at a side when he achieved new goals we talk about it He says that should anything happens to him, oh, he will die without regrets because it's something that he's happy doing. It. He has really lived 
life to its fullest. There is the saying in aviation, every pilot is hero. For me, if you save two lives in tsunami, you are a superhero. And Casey was the superhero. But that's whole world. Oh, oh world, my okay. oyster. Actually, I have mixed feelings. On one hand, I'm not sure how how would I feel when I see them. Yeah. On the other hand, I was so curious to see to meet up with them. Hello. Hi. Sharon, Sharon. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Baik, baik. Awak hidup betul. Baik. Hmm. Hai. Dia sangat baik. Saya gembira awak nak apa? Ada pokoknya ya. saya mau lihat gambar. Gambar dia? Ya. Ada kat sini. Saya, perasaan saya sedih setelah mengetahui Mr. Ang tiada. Saya merasa senang melihat wajah di foto. Hatinya sangat baik. Rela berkorban demi nyawanya untuk orang lain. Ini dia memang itu <laughs> macam ni. ini. Ya. Dia kata tak ada hati letak awak satu orang kat situ. Anak anak tak boleh tak ada ibu dia kata. Akhirnya selama dia menjaga saya beberapa jam, dia tidak mau tinggalkan saya. Terima kasih awak cerita. Itu anak awak. Sarah sini Sarah. Salam nak. Terima kasih. Mis Ang punya suami yang kayak malaikat. To really physically see both mother and child alive and well and happy, that's the best consolation to me.